Sandbaggers Case Files, a look back at the best spy show you've never heard of. Episode 3, Is Your Journey Really Necessary?, opens with a tense late-night scene in the ops room. Sandbagger 2, Jake Landy, is three hours overdue for a check-in from the field, and dawn is coming. Landy, badly wounded, is just a few steps ahead of the bad guys and their dogs as he tries to make his way toward the border, where Sandbagger 3, Alan Denson, is watching helplessly. But it's too late. The bad guys catch Landy as he makes his dash for the border. Suddenly, Landy is shot dead by Denson. The next day, C is upset to learn that Burnside has undertaken the mission, Operation Blue Nightingale, without clearing it first with the Foreign and Commonwealth Office or anyone in SIS, and he threatens to fire him. But Burnside explains that the mission was a favor to the CIA, which was necessary because SIS needs the benefits that they will get in return, since his agency is chronically underfunded and hamstrung by bureaucrats. I want to send an agent to the laboratory, I need the foreign secretary's permission. If I want him to do anything when he gets there, I need the prime minister's written approval. Denson returns to SIS, clearly shaken by what happened on Blue Nightingale. Right away, he tells Sandbagger 1, Willie Kane, he wants to quit the special section. He says it's because he wants to get married, but Kane and their boss, Neil Burnside, suspect it's really because of what happened on the mission. Burnside tries to charm Denson into changing his mind, but it doesn't work. After Denson leaves, however, Burnside tells Willie he has no intention of letting Denson go. I gotta replace Landy, that could take weeks. If I gotta replace Denson as well, that can take forever. No, I know, but don't you see? I mean, I've talked to him, you haven't. I mean, marriage, the girl, could all be an excuse. So, we get rid of the excuse. You don't think at the age of 25 he's going to walk in here and say, Sorry, sir, I'm a coward, eh? No, not Denson. So we get rid of the girl and he stays. <sighs> C asks Burnside to come up to see him. He tells Burnside that he's received a private message informing him that the first secretary of the British Embassy in Paris, Charles Rumney, is having a secret affair with a young Frenchman. C is concerned that, because Rumney is married and the affair is a secret, he could be vulnerable to blackmail if someone found out. Burnside suggests simply recalling Rumney, but there's a wrinkle. Rumney's brother Andrew is an influential politician and a likely future prime minister. If his brother is recalled from Paris because he's a security risk, it could be a career-ending scandal. Rumney must be made to come home of his own accord. But how? Burnside offers to pass the news to Sir Geoffrey Wellingham, Burnside's ex-father-in-law, at the Foreign and Commonwealth Office personally. Secrets, I suppose. Sex. Lot of it about, I'm told. After announcing his plans to quit SIS, Denson pays a surprise visit to his girlfriend, Sally Graham, and tells her he wants to get married, which surprises her because he's been avoiding discussing that very thing for the past ten months. She asks if his recent trip went badly, but he denies it. Also, it sure sounds like she might be pregnant, though she doesn't tell Denson that because he doesn't want to have kids. Back at SIS, Wellingham pays a surprise visit to C, asking Burnside to obtain evidence of Rumney's secret affair, preferably by sending a sandbagger, even though it's not really a special section job. It's politically sensitive. Look, all I'm saying is that we can't afford to have it go wrong. I'll make that clear to Paris, sir. Neil, if Sir Geoffrey particularly wants the sandbag... No, 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 James. Neil is right. You remember those wartime posters and railway stations? Sorry? Is your journey really necessary? And the sandbaggers are the special section. They're all special to me, sir. Uh, Mayor? Because I handle all operations, not just the sandbaggers. Of course, Neil. The decision must be yours. Thank you, sir. Things suddenly heat up when the British consul in Munich is kidnapped by terrorists. Burnside assigns Denson to go there to assess the situation. He tells Kane that, with Denson out of the country, it will be easier for him to follow Sally Graham and hopefully to dig up some dirt on her that Burnside can use to convince Denson to break up with her. Learning that Sally will be meeting an old friend for dinner that evening, Burnside orders Kane to tail her while he sneaks into her apartment. 
in search of incriminating evidence. Cain objects, pointing out that SIS doesn't have jurisdiction to operate domestically, but Burnside won't be dissuaded. Cain follows Sally as she has dinner with her old friend and ends up spending the night at his house. The next day, Burnside confronts her with the photographic evidence. She protests that there was nothing romantic or sexual about it. She was celebrating Denson's marriage proposal and simply had too much to drink to drive home safely. But in one of the darkest moments of the entire series, Burnside tells her that he's not prepared to stop there. I can have you taken off the streets, drugged, stripped, and into bed with a dozen different men. Then I could have you done for soliciting, shoplifting, breaking the Official Secrets Act. You'd do it too, wouldn't you? Yes, with regrets, sorrow. But yes, I'd do it. You may have to do it, because I'm not giving him up. Not for you, or your service, or anyone else. Think about it for 24 hours. I don't have to. I love him. I'm sorry, but you really wouldn't know what hit you. When Burnside returns to the office after scaring the bejesus out of Sally Graham, he learns from his personal assistant, Diane, that the Paris station's number two followed Rumney to another secret rendezvous with his lover, which means that Wellingham lied about having tipped him off. Burnside goes to sea to tell him the news and learns that Rumney's brother has resigned from office, which was Wellingham's plan all along. A few photographs, a slight... Bending of the truth, and it's nothing short of blackmail in the end. Meanwhile, in Munich, Denson has had time to do some thinking and calls Sally to say he's had a sudden change of heart about leaving SIS. He suggests that they postpone the wedding. But Sally, drunk out of her mind due to the stress, thinks Burnside has gotten to him, and now he's going to abandon her and her unborn child. Sally hangs up on Denson who rushes out of the building so he can fly back to see her. Back in London, Kane drops by Burnside's apartment to commiserate, but suddenly Burnside gets a call. Denson is dead, run over by a taxi in Munich while rushing to cross the street. As Kane says, he had too much on his mind. Burnside and Kane go to visit Sally to break the bad news, only to find that she, too, is dead having overdosed on pills and booze. I thought I knew him. I could see so much of myself in him. Well, I hope it's a consolation to you. You're the one who's got to live with it. A sign of just how willing Burnside is to sacrifice anything, even lives, for his vision of the greater good. Consider yourselves warned. In the next episode, Kane and the new sandbagger must thwart a terrorist plot in Gibraltar while Burnside hunts a mole in the SIS. That's next time on The Sandbagger's Case Files.